Hello and welcome to Film and Game Composers. My name is Mina Shamali, and today I'm speaking to Joey Newman, who is an award-winning composer and conductor for film, TV, and games. Uh, he's conducted for projects like Cars, Wally the Video Game, Far Cry, and Despicable Me, and he's written scores to shows like Providence, Privileged, and Little People Big World, as well as the massive online playing role game, massive online role-playing game, <laughs> Lineage. Uh, he scored films like Showing Up, My Uncle Raphael, the multi-award winning Any Day Now, and the Oscar-nominated short Adam and Dog. He's been composing the music for ABC's The Middle, starring Patricia Heaton and Neil Flynn, which is going into its eighth season. And he's scoring Berlanti Productions' The Mysteries of Laura, starring Deborah Messing, which is going into its third season. And yes, we the Newman in his name means exactly what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> so first up, congratulations are in order. Uh, because you were recently honored at the ASCAP Screen Music Awards for your music f on Mysteries of Laura. Thank you, yes. So, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. And, and and it's pretty cool because you kind of worked on another Deborah Messing project, sort of, the documentary on Will and Grace. That's right. That was That's right. <laughs> I did do that, that so, a, a while back for Lifetime. When it was uh, going into syndication on Lifetime, we did a special for it. That was fun. Yeah, which is Will and Grace backstage pass. So that's pretty yeah. cool. So how did you get involved with Mysteries of Laura? Um, I had done a pilot for Berlanti Productions and McGee uh, with Cuba Gooding Jr. called Guilty for Fox a while back. Yeah. And that one didn't go, but then I had kept my relationship with them and I got called in to do The Mysteries of Laura kind of right towards the end and uh, kind of came into that pilot and then the show got picked up and there you are. Now we're, you know, finishing <laughs> second season. Oh, and we finished second season, hopefully... There'll be a third where that bubble show that, you know, we'll see if it comes back or not kind no, of thing. It's, it's pretty cool. I never actually uh, got a chance to watch it, but I saw a few clips because they have a YouTube channel, which is pretty awesome. It gives you all mm. these episode highlights. So I got a chance oh. to really listen to what you do there and what the show's like. And it, it looks pretty awesome. It's just like... It, it works well for what it is. I mean, it came into its own, I think, second season. It really, um, it 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 found its its kind of niche in that, procedural world which i know is tough to do i mean there's certainly nbc is full of uh dick wolf productions that are you know chicago <laughs> med chicago whatever and so we kind of fit in in a cool way i think because i think because deborah's got a great following she's uh she can kind of play a little bit everything she can be comedic she can be serious um the cast gelled really well second season and it's it's been a lot of fun and i think that we held our own which is why i think you know it's been uh probably challenging for NBC to find a replacement so far at that particular time slot on that day. Yeah. So, no, it's, know, pretty cool. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Cause it's kind of, it seems to be this, this awesome serious procedural blended in with enough kind of humor and, and everyday life because the whole thing is her, about her balancing her. She's a homicide detective and she's also a mom to two boys. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's what? that balance act. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah like one joke is like, one yeah. joke's like you got, 75 countries agreeing on on climate change and i can get two boys to agree on cereal that's right it's, <laughs> it's very true <laughs> so it's pretty fun yeah. so what kind of things do you get to ask to create for the show uh you know the the beauty of doing any t tv show and and tv pilot in that you know regard is to find whatever that musical voice is going to be um we went through a couple different uh uh scenarios with the show first season we kind of it was a little bit um I would say more on the lines of uh, kind of funkier retro kind of uh, mystery comedy kind of stuff. It was more comedic first season and then second season went more procedural. So it kind of split between the comedy and then kind of into a new zone, which kind of really came more. I think second season, we were a little bit more rock oriented. We were a little bit more uh, kind of pulsating, atmospheric, slightly more action based on that front. Um, more procedural ultimately, but we kept some of the comedic stuff in line from the first season when we brought it in the second. But I think the second kind of gave us uh, more of a solid foundation to kind of work from from you know this point forward if it goes on. So, um, but it was it was fun. It's a, it was fun that you know she in the first season she was she's always wearing these rock T-shirts and she's <laughs> singing rock music. So you know we kind of used a little bit of that, but ultimately just trying to find a way to propel that story constantly forward. You know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And yeah, you did talk, you, you were just talking about, you know, the pulses and the grooves and stuff. Uh, there is a lot of scope for grooves and rhythmic motion in this score, as I've noticed from from what I've seen. Uh, does that kind of tie in directly to your roots as a drummer? 
definitely. That's always where I start. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that I, I've been doing a lot more rhythm-based stuff in general mm-hmm. lately, anyway, in my career. And uh, I do love it. I, I love doing that. I love doing orchestra um, either way. But I, I certainly um, always start from a rhythm kind of bass beginning and then kind of go up, you know, up to melody. So <laughs> it just tends to be as a, the way a drummer thinks. So, you know. Do you end up doing a lot of it? live with live recording of drums and percussion and instruments or did you lay down a lot of uh virtual instruments like what do you what are you doing there yeah on, on well on laura it's it's mostly all samples uh except for a few live and the guitars are all live and that's about it yeah but, I, i'm um, looking at your studio right now i've got like one two three four five oh, yeah five ones have, that are visible <laughs> that's right it's kind of like the, the, the little working so- selection i use i i kind of roll it over here when i work yeah and uh, I've got my acoustic, my bass, and then I've got a, a Strat, and then this kind of semi hollow body one that I use that I use on Laura a lot. So it's fun. I mean, it's you know, I I'm not a guitar player, but I love guitar yeah. as, <laughs> even more than I love drums. And um, it's uh, it's it's you know, I I think starting from a rhythmic component always is where I I live, no matter how I look at it. So it's uh, it, and Laura certainly started from that that place, you know. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Did you actually, did you get to create kind of anything really off kilter that maybe shouldn't have worked, but does for the show? For Laura? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I, I think that uh, not, I mean, I not maybe so much in that show as in some of the stuff I did for the middle, but Laura, we had a, uh, I mean, bringing in some of the stuff that we did or tried um, again, you know, you're kind of trying to find that balance between what works on all fronts from, you know, to under dialogue for the character, for the scene, um, something interesting, some, you know, how much contrast are we going to play? Are we going to go against the grain and how much is going to work for the studio and for the networks and, and for the public and, you know, what's really ultimately right for it. And if you find that balance as time goes on, but it also depends on, you know, a, a lot of it is like if it's if it's cut a certain way, if it looks a certain way, we can try different things. Yeah, so, yeah. Sometimes I find that, you know, when we the episodes that were probably the most different or that had, a, 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 you know, usually were more intense of an episode dramatically, um, we could try things musically a little bit differently. And I think that's just kind of, you know, you have that opening so we can take it. Um, but unlike, for example, on the middle, when I when I brought in a kind of a Latin flair for the character Sue, the daughter who would fall in love and have these crushes. Yeah. It was pretty yeah. different from the rest of the score. That was like <laughs> an unexpected fun thing that's followed me through the season. So, that, so that's exciting, you know? Well, that's pretty love- cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And we're talking, so we're talking to you in your studio right now. Uh, yes. What, is your studio also based in your home or is it a separate facility? Or- it's a separate facility about 10 minutes away from where I live. Yeah. Cool. Do you have a home studio that you work from? As well? I don't. I, I've kept it home and not uh, uh, home studio at the moment. But you know, maybe down the road I'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> does that does that tend to mean that you're? Would you actually be in there till like four in the morning for any reason? <laughs> I have done that. Yeah. Yes, it just depends on the time and the project and how things are going. I have been definitely known to stay late, and uh, you know when I can, you know I try to go home at normal times. Oh, that's pretty know, cool. So like, and yeah, have you found it kind of? easy difficult to kind of balance that with your home life or is it is it challenging it's, or is it <laughs> it's very challenging I, I i'm not sure that this uh this lifestyle balances well with that kind of world anyway so i think that we always have to have a little give and take yeah. um as long as the family understands ultimately the situation uh and you know we as as fathers and 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 husbands and things become you know, we, we make a presence known and, and we come back and we, you know, we explain this is kind of how things are, but we're also there uh, in the important times and also the little times. It makes a big difference. I mean, I, I think a lot of it can be understood. I mean, the kids, everybody kind of gets this is what I do. And mm. it's mm. it can be difficult and it can be challenging and it can take up a lot of hours. Um, and then when I when it's when it's over, you you're present. You know, that's the <laughs> that's, that's the hardest challenge is just kind of decompressing from what we do here yeah. because it lives in our brains and lives in our, our artistry and to kind of just kind of come out of that and go into a new 
bit of chaos. That's a totally different story <laughs> yeah, at home. So yeah, and I suppose it's not having the studio at home means that there's no chance someone's going to listen to you repeat the same kind of passage 300 times trying to work on it. That's true. And then they'd be like, they'll watch it on TV and it's like, hey, that's the thing that dad kept going on. That that doesn't sound that impressive. <laughs> it is. That, that's a good point. When I pick up my daughter from school and I bring her and she sits in the studio and like waits, you know, to go home and she does end up hearing the same things over and over again. So she's a fan of the middle. So when she watches the show at home, she goes, I remember when you were scoring that show. I'm sure that's part of it. But she hears the same thing over and over again. Sorry, that, that was rude of you. She's like, that is not that impressive. They were, she might be like very impressed, but she's like, well, I've heard it no, 300 it's, times it's now. Not, it's not impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised anybody finds it impressive. Oh, no, so. dude. D- don't, <laughs> don't undersell yourself. You've got, you've got some incredible talent, man. Thank you. And, um, What's in, in the Mysteries of Lore? Is there anything in the show's musical future that, that, that excites you or that you might know yet? Uh, I don't know yet. I mean, you know, what I would love to do is uh, if we can go to our third season and continue on from where we left off, um, it would be great to anytime we get some new characters involved in the show, I can kind of expand a bit on on what we're doing. And uh and I would love to just continue to expand upon that and kind of see where it leads us. Truly, the evolution of the show, is, to me, always dictates what we're going to do. I mean, the more visual opportunities I have and character opportunities I have and storytelling opportunities I have, the more that I can kind of throw things at it. You know, you find this foundation of sounds and styles and, and musical vocabularies and motifs you can use, and then you know, that hopefully can sustain you over a long period of time where then you can pull from as it kind of goes along. So I think we've got that, and it's just a matter of see what's ahead. I mean, yeah. we'll never know until they start writing it. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair fuck. Now, just on a little side side note, there's a little project on your IMDb page called Lightning Girl, which is a, it's a short oh. film that was completed in 2016. The interesting right. thing is that it's directed by Zed Starkovich, who's actually the music editor on The Mysteries of Laura, and he's That's also right. on uh, on some other Belanti shows like Arrow and Blind Spots. Right. So, <laughs> I just I don't, I don't know what what you could you if you ever even wanted to talk about it, but you know how what what could you tell us about? It? I I think uh, he was wanting to do a project with uh you know for his because he's also he's also a picture editor as well and mm. he wanted a small director reel, so he ended up using some of my music uh in his short. So, you know, and, and then asked me what I thought about some of these scenes. And then I would say, you know, I think, yeah, you, I think we need some more music here and whatever. But he was using some of just my original music. Oh, so you were actually sitting there scoring it. I didn't actually score it. Yeah. I all, mean, uh, it's on your IMDb. That's, that's all I know. So the, the beauty of music editors is that they're pretty good at cutting in music. Because to, to uh, the, yeah. they're probably cutting in like all these different layers because you've probably got stems and stuff of your music. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Shifting yeah. gears. Sure. Uh, the middle. Now you've been working on that since 2009, and it's been recently been renewed for an eighth season. So congratulations! Thank you. Uh, now, if anyone doesn't know, the middle it's a comedy starring Patricia Heaton, Neil Flynn, aka Dabra, and mm-hmm. the janitor from Scrubs. That's right. That's right. <laughs> again, it's again it's another one of the shows that I haven't caught up with. But when I've seen clips of it, I was just like, this is hilarious. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And the the Br- bricks little whispering thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, if you watched the show for like seven seasons so far, you know what that's like. What it's like, <laughs> you just see it out of context. It's just yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Out. Yeah. yeah. So, so I suppose you know this is what's it like working on this on the same show for so long. It's um, it's got its own set of challenges. I, it's incredibly rewarding and 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 awesome and then it can be just as tedious as it is i'm sure for some aspects of the of the filmmaking too you know yeah. it's like you kind of i think the beauty of the show is that um you we've been watching this family grow up so i don't know too many shows out there that have uh had you know multiple kids graduate high school like you've got the first kid axel and then sue graduates and now Brick is, you know, in middle in middle school going to high school. And yeah. then if the show would, would be, continue on, he'd graduate high school. So it's like you're following <laughs> this kind of pretend family through real things, which 
brings me back to my little people days of watching that family grow up and then you know so it's like a little people big world is what you're talking about yeah yeah big world so it's it's been really uh awesome you know to to where i mean i would say first season when we were developing the sound of the show musically um again you know that first season kind of creates your template of sounds and you find out what's working what's not working you're watching the cast do its thing you're you're you know watching all the comedy beats you're understanding the pacing and then second season rolls around and you've got a clear picture of really what is working and what it's like plus they've got a whole library now of, of season one music to use yeah. to temp your show so the show really gets on its its feet and now you know almost eight, now going into the eighth season truly we've found its basis but then the great part is that little things happen now off and on like i said i introduced this this latin component so that comes in once in a while for so everybody's got their little intricacies which i i, I don't think a lot of people always get that um you know the, a half hour show can have this much scoring kind of yeah. happening but it really is i've created a little motifs and themes for every character that i try to kind of tie into each other keep it going um and then we'll do you know a halloween show or we'll do a christmas show or we'll do a you know some sort of themed music show yeah. and it's yeah. awesome so that, that that's the best part but mainly it's working with these incredibly talented people for so long it's like a family so everybody kind of the shorthand is amazing and it's just it's it's you're i feel blessed to be able to go <laughs> into work and work with people i love like this you know it's really oh, exciting brilliant. so yeah it's, everyone just starts to feel like a family very bit. much. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows how to do this thing pretty well now at this point. It's pretty well old machine that show, you know. <laughs> so once the once the show wraps up, would you do you feel you get some withdrawals or some like totally. separation anxiety? Complete myth, middle withdrawals, definitely. Yeah. Have you actually uh, worked cuz I don't know like how long the shows you've worked on have been, but have you worked on something for this long before? Like on the same this project is- with the same people? No, this is the longest I think I've ever had a series go. I mean, I, this the show went into syndication. I, I didn't even know. I didn't even think I'd ever get a show that would go into syndication in my <laughs> in my career. So that was exciting to see that. So yeah, we've like 160 episodes ish or something like that. I mean, Little People, Big World was the only other long kind of. I was on that show for a while. Jeez, like so that was that was a while to 2004. Uh, we did how many seasons of that? I did. I did it like six, seven seasons of that ish, and then you know it's still going on. They're still using my music here and there as yeah. well, so it's yeah. it's still pretty active. They're in eleven seasons now, but wow. it was a long time that we were. You know, I was on that series too, but I watched those kids grow up too. So that yeah. was, and I got to visit the family and visit the farm, and so that was a special experience to kind of actually work on a show with live people and score their lives yeah you know and then actually meet them and then tell you wow you know it was really amazing to watch you kind of write music for our 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 life you know it's a different it's a different world so you've got the kind of scripted family in the middle and you've got the real life family in this other show and they're incredible you know either way you're you're still scoring moments no matter what it looks like no matter how how it is so apart from the producers and the directors you actually get to hang out a lot with either the actors on, on the shows that you're working on as well as the, the real people you're scoring in documentaries. So apart from, apart from this documentary we're talking about uh, from Little People Big World, uh, you, do you actually get, get enough of a chance to hang out with all the people who are like, oh, you're the one scoring my character kind of thing? You know, it's taken... Uh, most people don't see me unless it's at the rap party. So, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm mostly dealing with post, and once in a while I go over to the writer's area. It just depends on... Some of the TV shows, um, post and production are together in the yeah, same building. Yeah. Others, they're not. The middle has two different buildings for post and production. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know, that know I exist only from the name and the music, but never <laughs> have seen me before. Oh, wow. um, so over the years, I've, I've seen the actors and I've, I've recorded a few of them here at the studio on anything that we've done with the, uh, the actors singing or yeah. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they they finally kind of I think we finally kind of all know each other at this point. It's, but it took a while to get there. It's not wow. you know, yeah. It's it's interesting experience, you know. No, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool as well that this being a single camera sitcom, they tend to allow a lot more scope for music. Yeah, um, and so that's really up to the show runners how they want to incorporate it. Uh, so I'm guessing you, you got to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, so you got to actually, you weren't just doing stings and transitions. You were doing a lot more. <laughs> 
it's the best part. I mean, I, I think that's the, the great thing about these single cam comedies is that, um, and in particular this one, in particular where the showrunners um, really care about the musical voice of their show. And I think that they do, you know, I, I think when we do score these moments or we kind of go into an emotional thing, you know, we're really there for a real reason. We're, we're not just randomly put there. It's very specific and we're a huge support system to the overall arc of the show. Um, and I think that, you know, that is, you know, it, in my book, it's mainly due to the, to, due to Eileen and Deanne, our two showrunners. I think that they created a show that really could, you know, make that happen, um, where the music was a bigger part of the overall story. So that's been great. It's been a real blessing. And it was my first, you know, single cam to, to be able to kind of realize that because I only come from scoring situations, not as much in terms of the, multicam stings of just act outs yeah, and act yeah. ins. So it's really been great to be able to try to figure out either an alternative way to make those stings work during those moments when you have them, but ultimately, you know, to, to come up with some sort of real scoring kind of moments. Um, and I think that this show offers a lot more than the norm. I, I, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other single cams out there, but I think we're doing a pretty fun job of scoring all this stuff, you know? Yeah. And that's pretty cool. That and I've, and I've found that, in in comedy music is a lot more about context than it is about you know writing comedic music right because so, obviously it's like you know you have those old days of you used to write funny music or comedy music or that kind of thing but i i, I don't know if it's just people have trying to get get away from the cliche because like yeah. you watch something for example like how about your mother there's a lot a lot of serious music but it's the yeah. situation that it's in it's right like, oh my god what's going on this is like this really kind of like horror kind of thing or some really cool Spanish thing that has to do. And it's just really more about the context you place it in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, certainly everybody wants to get away from the, uh, you know, sitcom -y, stingy stuff. Yeah. You know, part of it is just that if they shoot it a certain way, sometimes it begs for it. And some, you know, and we, we try to find creative, interesting ways to deal with that, that aren't, you know, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -la out, you know? <laughs> so that's all know. folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're you're trying to find a, a a a different way or something a little bit, you know, that makes you feel like you're still kind of moving, but you have one to two seconds to to do that. It's not very easy. It, it, it's more difficult. The process to score the middle is more time consuming than than some of my hour stuff is. And then Laura, even to some degree, when it comes to the overall amount of things I have to do to kind of make those small moments work, okay. um, especially since I'm for my preview, I'm also performing these guitars, you know, for her. So, yeah. you know, that takes time. And then I have a, you know, recording session where my guitar player comes in and then replaces it. And, it, you know, everything is a process to kind of make all that work. But wow. that's part of the, the, the fun on our part as composers to be able to enjoy <laughs> the musical process, feel challenged, have all these things happen, but also to, you know, give the show the best quality and the highest standard possibly can give it. <laughs> uh, that's pretty awesome. That's funny yeah. with, co with comedy, uh, I had one of my tracks for, I had it placed in a library. It was like this really like kind of piano strings thing. Kind of sounds a bit like American Beauty. I didn't mm -hmm. mean it to, but and then I just submitted it. A year later, I find it on, on a whole bunch of comedy videos. Ah. <laughs> it's like, this was meant to be this like introspective, pensive thing. It's just like, and that's actually what they do it. It's like the moment where like a character has a realization and then they have a punchline. <laughs> and it's just like. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. There so you go. It's really kind of, it's funny. That's how it works. Yeah. Oh lord. So yeah. So at the at the top of this, I mentioned that the Newman in your name means exactly what people think it means, which is that you come from the Newman family of musicians and composers, and like Randy Newman and Lionel Newman and uh, Thomas Newman and David Newman and <laughs> who's who. Yes. Uh, it, it, so my grandfather is Lionel. Lionel was Alfred Newman's youngest brother. Al Newman was pretty much the uh, you know, the, the musical patriarch of, of the Newman brothers, um, there was 10 kids in that line. So, oh, wow. um, there's Al and then Emil and then my grandfather, Lionel, who, so Lionel followed, uh, Al as head of music of Fox when Al retired from Fox. And then, um, Al's kids are David and Thomas and Maria, who's also a musician composer. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and then Irving, who was a, a doctor in the family, who was also one of my grandfather and Al's brothers, is Randy's dad. So mm. then, so you have all these, so, so we're kind of 
all spun from the same web there, just in a little bit of a different kind of scene. But uh, certainly the musician gene is extremely strong among the family. There's a lot of, lot of us in general, a lot of musicians. Um, but uh, for now, at least, it's until somebody else rolls along in my generation, I seem to be the only one right here and doing this thing. <laughs> Uh, the family business, but I love it. I mean, it's 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 great. But we're all co- so we're all cousins, you know, except for David oh, and Tom and Maria, who are brother and sister. Everybody else is cousins to each other. I'm just the next generation. I'm you know Randy, David, and Tom and Maria's, you know, the the, the generation below them. So I'm third generation composer in my family. That's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> that you, you said something about musical genes. It's not just your musical genes; it's your actual genes. Because Newman men seem to age extremely well. Oh, extremely well <laughs> like <laughs> thomas newman does not look 60 he looks great <laughs> or he looks He's awesome like, for 60 and okay. you don't look your age <laughs> oh well thank you <laughs> like i was surprised to learn magic. wait you're almost 40 <laughs> magic of video magic of television <laughs> magic no believe um, me believe me you see enough enough pictures of like all, all, all the newman composers and musicians and you can tell you can tell like this like so is it is it all entirely genetic or do you guys just really take good care of yourselves maybe it's living in la you know you're like forced to eat organic and quinoa (laughs) and things like that i don't know um are you sick of kale yet (laughs) yeah like lots of kale lots of kale um but uh i don't know maybe it's we're just stuck in a room all day so we never see any light any sunlight so we're just you know we keep ourselves looking uh looking smooth and porcelain <laughs> perhaps perhaps i don't know actually. but um no it's great it's 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 a uh, it's an amazing you know fan, people always uh, you know people ask me you know what's what's it like or h- how do you like you know is it tough being a newman is it pressure filled and all these things and I, I will say one thing it's like this family for me personally in my situation has always been i just want to uphold a legacy of just great music in the film and television industry, whether, you know, it's going to be my way of doing it just as it is the rest of them. And, you know, we all have our own kind of voice or our own thing going, but to be, to, to me, to be a part of this musical dynasty is extremely special. I'm a fan of my, my cousin's music the same way you are. Yeah. So it's yeah. not like it's any different for me. Uh, you know, I'm, I grew up listening to Randy and my cousin Tom all the time. That was the way I loved it. Too. And it was, Totally for other reasons. It's just the fact that these guys write great music for, for film yeah. and TV. And, uh, and Randy's a great songwriter. I mean, so, you know, and David is a great conductor and a great composer, too. And, compl- you know, it's like there's there, each one of the family members has this really interesting kind of unique story. And the family as a whole has a unique story. So to be a part of that is incredibly special for me, you know. So what's so, unique about your story? Well, I think that, uh, you know, like it is for, uh, you know, any kind of musician in today's setting, um, I came up, I think, in a, in a somewhat, somewhat traditional way that my generation did, you know, assisting composers and all of that. Um, I think the one thing that all the Newmans share is just a love of melody and love of music. And, mm-hmm. over, and overall, I think that's what each of us have kind of done on our own. I mean, I'm certainly, I don't know, I mean, you could probably ask Tom, and it's like, if you ever find whatever that voice is, I'm sure for him, he's always still searching. He's always going to be a student of music or always doing all these <laughs> things. And I, I feel like, you know, every time I talk to my cousins about it, I'm always blown away by their their thoughts and their experiences and their philosophies on music. But, um, you know, I, I think we just keep going. You know, I keep trying to, to always hear new things, try to understand uh you know what i what it is that i'm expressing what i have to say and to try to find the best way that i can emote music to some sort of visual because that's my my passion that's mm. certainly where i think a lot of the passion lies for us as musicians in this newman family is we we you know we love writing music and we love writing to visual yeah. um so that's truly you know i i just hope to find my place in that somewhere you know in the, <laughs> and how and, and to be able to constantly um you know work with musicians i mean i love collaboration i, I love yeah working with live players as much as I can. That's a huge part of our sound, you know, is, is that kind of marriage between the, the, you know, the musicians we're using and the talent pool that we have in town and making all of that come alive. It's, it's a big part of, I think our music and our sound too. Do you have any kind of solo musicians that you end up working with time and time again on different shows? I've been working with this guitar player, George Deering, who's been working for my cousin Tom for, you know, forever as well. (laughs) He's one of my favorite musicians in town. He's a, 
and he's incredibly talented guy who can kind of do anything. And, you know, this day, you know, I've, I've worked with him now for what, 17 years. And wow. it's still like, I I'm still blown away every time he comes in and every musician in town will tell you the same thing about George Deering. So, wow. He's a, he's a force and his sweetheart and a, a guy who really just is passionate about music and passionate yeah. about working with other composers. So it's great. Oh, that's brilliant. And, yeah. Uh, did, and cause you, you, you talk about the idea of legacy and, uh, does that ever kind of become a source of pressure when you're working? Is it like you're working on something and then you listen back and you're like, Oh no, this is not, this is not up to the Newman legacy. <laughs> <laughs> but like do you, do you ever think because i figure i figure if they ever made a fictionalized you know series about your lives about the newmans they just got the newmans and yeah. it just be, be this like serious thing and like they they dramatize it and then you'd be like no no i can't do this it's just like it's like what will thomas think what will yeah. david think well you know what's funny do you mean i think that like I Sorry, think, my imagination runs wild. But. No, it's great. It's great. And it's kind of like the Downton Abbey of Newmans, you know? The upstairs, <laughs> downstairs Newmans. <Yes. laughs> I think um, I, I think that we have... Uh, the, the pressures that the, 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 the generation of... Uh, first of all, having Alfred Newman as your father and then going into the business when Tom and David did, that must have been the most difficult pressure. Mm. Um, you know, he's, he's a legend of the industry. And then you have these two kids who are incredibly talented that had to kind of deal with all of the other uncles and other, you know, people already in it in different positions at a time when, you know, nowadays Tom Newman's sound, I think who kind of really, you know, broke out a lot of different boundaries. Um, you know, that wasn't as accepted back in those days, you know, to kind of to do a score like unstrung heroes, which is one of my favorite Tom Newman scores, like yeah. so different from the norm. Um, <laughs> You know, that kind of stuff just wasn't around. So I think that they blazed those trails for all of us to come around. And uh, I don't feel the same type of pressures uh, of kind of living up to, uh, you know, what I think would be the right kind of thing to do. I feel like I would like to not always be compared yeah, necessarily yeah. to, you know, oh, this sounds like Tom or this sounds like whatever it is. But that's just the nature of what it is. I mean, again, you know, you're you're from a family. You're, they're going to assume that there's influence in there and that's totally fine. And, and, and I love that. I just think that, you know, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I do, no matter what. And, um, you know, I like, again, I think we all have our standards at a really high level and that's the best that we can do, you know? Mm. And I, I'd, to, assume, to that. Yeah, I'd assume that, that being part of the human family is more like having this incredible resource of, of music. Like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, who are you going to bounce this to? Oh, I'm just going to send it to my cousin Tom. You know, it's just like <laughs> versus versus I'm going to like, you know, send it to someone who doesn't really know something and be like, that's great, honey. Yeah, yeah. I've, or, I've, that's great, dude, or that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I've become very close with, with Randy, who's been a huge um, support and also an incredible mentor and incredible family member. I mean, they're all great. Yeah. Fam you know, again, I've had to kind of introduce myself more to the family, kind of coming from, you know, not being younger to try to explain kind of you know what i'm up to who i am the whole nine yards but randy i think embodies a lot of what my grandfather would be like if i had that relationship with yeah, my grandfather yeah. he, he died when i was 12 11 12 so um i hadn't decided to go into music as a career yet until i was about 15 so i i was so but i i feel like my working relationship with randy is much more like what it would have been like if i had my grandfather around so that's pretty it's been very exciting and i'm such a huge fan and i just love to listen to his his whole I mean, not only all these great stories but just to, to kind of like i studied his scores and i've conducted his scores and i've learned from him it's really really yeah. fascinating you know and i mean it, just in general the, the newmans all the different components of them musically yeah. is fascinating you know? and and you ha you you have an incredible voice of your own and oh thanks i don't think it needs to be compared to anyone else like for, <laughs> I've, I've listened through your entire soundcloud and it's like yeah this dude's no, doing his own thing man oh <laughs> and, thanks man and like it is it is easy like i couldn't imagine being in your place because i'm like you know i'm pretty much the only musician in my family or you know trying to do this and, yeah. uh but yeah obviously like you're coming from this generation of musicians so i'd imagine it is it is hard to be in that situation but at the same time you do an incredible job of maintaining your own voice and your own personality thank you yeah is, i mean i think that's you, you said it perfectly that's the best we can do is just to maintain that. 
and to find that voice. I mean, it's going to be different. Um, yet, like all of us, you know, we're, we're you're. I'm sure for you, your heroes, you somebody you've uh, you know musicians you've aspired to to be like or have learned from or or you know emulate. It's all there. It's all yeah. somewhere in there. And then you just try to create a voice out of that, and then something interesting comes along. I think also the beauty of of you know you, you hope to get afforded the opportunities to be able to express some of those things. I think that's also difficult, you know, when we, and when you work in the film and TV medium, you, yeah. you get yeah. what you get and you have to try to make something out of that. Um, <laughs> it's not always easy if you don't get a great piece of footage or a great story or a great content. So you do the best, you know, I mean, when I look at, look at my cousin Tom's movies, pretty incredible. I mean, most of us have wanted to score all of those. Yeah. So, Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite movies ever, as well as Awakenings, which is one of my favorite Randy score. It's like, so it's like you look at all these incredible films and they've had these opportunities to create this incredible music for those incredible films that that's all part of it too. So, um, you know, we, we all, so when we get our projects, no matter what it is, you try to make the best out of it. And then man, once in a while, it's just, you get a magical piece that works great, you know, <laughs> good marriage good. between the two. Yeah. Film and music. That was brilliant. And yeah. Uh, speaking of people you admire, you, apparently John Williams has been one of your, I, I don't know if it's a friend or a family friend or someone you've seen, a, you've seen, <laughs> you've actually hung out with a lot. Yeah. John Williams was one of, was one of my grandfather's best friends. Um, and you even so worked, worked with him at some point? I was able to, yeah, I was doing a few things where I was able to work, um, to rehearse uh, the orchestra for John and, and uh, that was exciting. <laughs> um, and to watch him conduct and talk to him, you know, a lot and, and to kind of get his take. He's, he's, a, he's, a, I mean, what you see in interviews is very much who he is. Mm. He's not any much different outside of that. He's an incredibly humble, sweet, intelligent, uh, man who's, you know, a musical genius, you know? And I think that's, uh, it's, you know, for all of us, yes, most of us have, have gravitated towards John Williams music that got us started. Um, I love John Williams' music. It wasn't the reason why I went into film music, but yeah. I am a yeah. huge fan of his work and, and a, huge, a huge fan of his concert work. I mean, the guy yeah. can write yeah. anything. So oh, yeah. It's pretty <laughs> remarkable. He can and write and a it, lot of people under the table, really. Yeah, it's a, a, there, he is a force. I mean, I don't think there will ever be another guy like him. And there shouldn't be. There should be other people that are interesting and amazing and incredible, but yeah. there will never be another John Williams. Yeah, And there will never be another Joey Newman. Never That's forget right. that. Never forget That's that. Right. It's not forgotten. <laughs> oh man! So I, I always love talking gear and tools in studio space. And you've 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 told me a little about your space. But what's the most essential thing in your studio? Be it be it musical or non musical. Wow, that's a great question. Um, the most essential thing in the studio, uh, I I think there's I guess it's two things. One is uh, a, a an iPad shortcuts that my my assistant Seth Kaplan has built for me, which has been a huge workflow. All my favorite, you know, quick keys and, and shortcuts into kind of one palette. That's yeah. been great. Yeah. That's been ex exceptionally helpful, as well as uh, the upgrade of my computers. I have these this kind of custom PC Audio Labs PC, as well as my Mac Pro. And that PC is is a monster, and that has actually been, you know. So I, I host all my sounds on the PC, and then, uh, you know, do I work in, in digital performer on my Mac, and it's been great. I mean, so it's like everything. I used to have a bunch of rack gear, and it's all just yeah. kind of comes down to one little computer, two little computers, you know. Yeah, I'll hear stories of that. It's, it's incredible, like thirty six gig samplers or something. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how it's just come down to like it's there, there's computers are just so powerful, yeah. but um, you know. Workflow is everything in television. I mean, mm. you know, we have our stuff is really dialed in because we've got to deliver so much all the time. So that's been a huge thing is like, how can I make this the most efficient setting so that I can kind of come in work and get that stuff out? Has know? there been kind of like a virtual instrument or a sample library or a plugin that's that's you've just found kept coming back to time and time again? That's a great question. Um, well, drum wise, I fell in love with these tune track drums, which I have talk to a bunch to the uh, to the guys who make them I, I i really enjoy i mean you know i thought about you know getting either recording live drums or myself or doing some v drums things and then i started playing some of their sample libraries i really liked so i've been using their <laughs> sample drums to almost everything i've been doing i guess they're like my go-to they've got so many libraries and they're kind of my go-to drums yeah. so um i guess between that and what else is, is kind of really been great I've been I've been really into the uh, sig output signal 
has been uh, for a lot of cool, like custom pulsators. Yeah. And that's been kind of cool. So are we hearing a lot of that in Mysteries of Laura? <laughs> a lot of yes, output. Yes, <laughs> a lot of pulsators in there, that's for sure. No, and, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to let the guys know that the, the <laughs> that's where their stuff is featured. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that's There you go. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, but there's so many great, there's so many good ones nowadays. I mean, I guess it all depends upon what it is, yeah. you know, you need if you're going to more orchestral or more, what you know whatever but between that and a bunch of omnisphere things <laughs> right that's no, just good. the reason I, the reason i ask is that like there's a couple of libraries where i've just like i'd be like what do i need now this library will do and it's like i'll keep coming back to that same and same library same yeah. same plug and be like wow this has been more useful than i ever thought it would be when i bought it <laughs> yeah no exactly that's that's a good point <laughs> yeah cool. all right true. i'll give you the last question sure what's the most surprising thing you've learned in your career and what's the most surprising thing people learn about you yeah, the most surprising thing I learned in my career. Wow. Um, and then the surprising thing that people learned about me. Is, is that what your question was? Yeah. Okay. It's technically a two-parter, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you uh, could choose to not answer one of them if you want. <laughs> I, uh, boy, you know, the most surprising thing in my career so far has been, um, it is true about what people say about hanging in there long term. I, I think that, you know, we're, this is a longevity based career. Um, yeah. I think it's definitely moving a little bit more to where, you know, the younger people are definitely, and, and, and when I mean younger, I mean like, you know, twenties coming out of college and young late twenties, early thirties of basically kind of those who are getting creative control over things, but also people who are kind of coming into that world. Um, they, they, there's something to be said for us who have experience, which has always been the case for composers over, you know, all kinds of, decades of of those people but it really is a matter of like knowing your stuff and getting that opportunity and it will come but you gotta kind of stay through the whole thing it's tough mm. you know it's not easy to to kind of sift through the difficulty of shrinking budgets and you know not being able to record in town or all these kinds of crazy things or yeah. the fact that so many schools are putting out tons of composers so there's a lot more bizarre kind of competition but yet truthfully there's only so many slots for the top stuff anyway mm -hmm. but there's a lot more media which is exciting so there's from the web or whatever it might be um but i mean i'm definitely surprised at, at how long uh you know it, it really does take for us to kind of get to that point it's it's true you know i think this decade of 40s for like most composers is you know for me will kind of be a, a more like the kind of prime time where the 30s were the build time yeah, and it's now yeah. seemed to be 20s to 30s are the build time and then hopefully by the 40s you know you're kind of more situated and it can really grow but who knows i mean it's <laughs> these things are changing so much maybe that's um, the most surprising thing is how things change <laughs> yeah i mean i think things would always kind of change around but it it is like wow you know it's 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 a it is different. Yeah. It's different from even when I started, you know, some, you know, some years ago, it's a whole different world. And I came in right on the tail end of the much more kind of traditional television, like still series were pretty strong on major networks. Yeah. And so, so yeah. So the other big surprise would certainly be the fact that nobody, I would never have guessed the streaming situation would be the way it is <laughs> when it comes to television. It's a whole new beast. And it's also affecting royalties for composers too. So that'll yeah. be an interesting climb you know <laughs> um but surprise the thing about me i don't know i think i think many people are surprised uh by the fact that i i have you know a family and three kids and and uh i do all of this thing you know i mean i i think uh it's it, it's tough to um to balance your life out i have not been able to talk to a composer yet that can give me great advice about balancing you know the perfect balance between family you know personal and business when it yeah. comes to our job because it's always going to be a give and take always I, was, I always ask this question and i get a variety of responses but the in, the one thing that doesn't change is that it is hard it is very hard i mean i, I don't know unless you're maybe alf claus and writing the simpsons for you know 20 plus years you know <laughs> with, a, with a set start point and a set out point um, but even he has kids, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I mean, I, I think that, it, you know, it, it's just because our career is so solo and it's all here and it kind of comes to you when it comes, you know, we have to train ourselves to work between these hours of being creative. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not what most people would think, oh, you write music just kind of whenever you want and it kind of comes to you in your sleep and all those yeah. kind of things. <laughs> no, it's, it's a real thing. It's like if you're a writer on a show, you also have to write this stuff during a certain time. Mm. So, um, so, so that, so I, I think, you know, 
to me, it's always surprising when, you know, we, we can all we can do all of it and we come out kind of OK, you know, <laughs> and that, that our kids still love us. We're still with our wives. We're still with our husbands, whatever. <laughs> yeah. but everything is still going on as best as possible. You know? uh, that's awesome. Joey, thank yeah. you very much. Oh, for- I mean, a pleasure. For Thank chatting you for with us, it's 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 been fantastic. Really awesome getting to know you, and you know, you too, really man. getting to experience your personality and your music. It's, it's oh, thank you. And I'm definitely going to be start watching Mysteries of Lore a lot more now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> really. go for it. I think season one's on Netflix, so you know, yeah. well, and then you... uh, catch in your middle. And no yes, episode. absolutely. Are, are yeah. the soundtracks going to be? Are the soundtracks out uh, for both of those shows? No, I wish. No, that, you oh, know, okay. it would. That's that's that'd be something to consider down the line, but there is no uh, available. I'll tell stuff. you what. Get get on get on Greg Berlanti. Tell him, dude, how come Blake Neely gets all his stuff released and I don't? Exactly. <laughs> I'm call him up. Tell him that. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, I hope you have a wonderful uh, wonderful day. Good luck with the future, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm.